Thank you for joining me again. This is Councilman Alta. We are live on Easter night 2020 and this is our final night of our, our uh, uh, nightly prayer that we've been doing. We started last week Sunday and um, we, we've been we've been having a, a wonderful time every night to just gather together here um, online through Facebook Live and it's been wonderful to to have a lot of you just join us every night and uh you know it, it, it's been a tough week it's been a tough few weeks it's been a tough month actually you know that we've been dealing with this uh, coronavirus COVID-19 that has pretty much impacted the entire world um we we see it all over the media we see it all over the news um we see it just about everywhere we go we always see messages about COVID-19 but you know what there's always a way through and, the, and our answer in the midst of this, our answer to our problems that we're dealing with, which is the coronavirus, you know, is Jesus Christ. And that's a message that we've been relaying um, every night. We've had many pastors come online with us. We had uh, Pastor Paula Nuza from Phoenix Church of His Presence on Monday night. We had Pastor Christian Lent from Kenyan Day Assembly of God. And then we had on uh, Wednesday night, uh, Pastor Alvin Martinez who was online with us. And then we had Pastor Gladys Bencomo from McNary. Then we had um, Pastor Marty Paxson from White River Assembly of God. And then last night we had Pastor Hal Corbett from CBQ Assembly of God. Tonight, um, we just want to continue with our nightly prayer. And I have a very special friend with me online. I've known this guy for forever. And we went to college together. We went to church together. Um, his family's become like my own family. You know, the, there's that saying that uh, some your friends become family. Well, I tell you, the Lanuza family has become my own family, and I've known them for such a long time. And tonight we have Pastor John Lanuza from Phoenix Church of His Presence. He is the son of Pastor Paul Lanuza, who was online with us on Monday night, and we welcome him tonight. Uh, Pastor John, you there? Yeah. Good evening. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Can't complain. It's been a beautiful day. Uh, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, it's been it's been nice. Yes, it has. And uh, you know, I just like to say thank you for joining us online tonight. And it's it's been a wonderful day for us, despite the fact. And uh, you're no stranger to the White Mountains. Uh, you're familiar with uh, Fort Apache Indian Reservation. You've been up here on numerous ministry trips and just also for family vacations and such. And uh, it's good to have you online with us. But tonight, I just wanted to ask you um, if you could just give an encouraging word to uh, our listeners tonight. I know this morning you did an awesome job uh, uh, conveying a message of hope at your resurrection service, which was uh, live streamed on Facebook Live. And I tell you, you did an awesome job this morning. But tonight, if you could just share a little bit about what, what you spoke about to encourage our listeners tonight, if you can just go ahead and, and do that, Pastor John. Um, my world is, is no different than all the others. Uh, my livelihood, my job, um, my everyday routine, everyday life has been affected by this uh, COVID-19 issue on around the world. Uh, I try to control something that cannot be stopped, something that we can do nothing about. But being a believer in Christ, I know who's in control. I know who holds this world in the palm of his hand. And I, I know that he, even though it may get hard and, and it may God is in control and he's going to be there regardless hey. of hey, whatever's going on around me. 
Um, he's with me every step. Yeah. Let, let me uh, let me switch you over. Um, let me switch you over real quick. Okay, hold on. All right, John, can you hear us better? Okay, yeah, this one's a lot more, a lot clear. Um, like I was saying, my everyday world has been impacted too, and I I've heard the question a lot of how can you how can you continue to be the way you are? Um, aren't you worried? Aren't you stressed? It doesn't seem. And the reason why I can do that is because I know who holds my world in their hands. I know that God is with me every step that I take and every breath that I take, that he's going to be with me, and that's his promise to us. And I, I have learned through all these years to know what it really means to have God with you wherever you would go. And Resurrection Sunday is just to re just reaffirms that message. Um, I, as I was sharing with my congregation this morning, Resurrection Sunday is something that separates us from so many other different beliefs. Um, you're not going to find a grave where Jesus' body lay to go and to, and to speak to and honor and do whatever it is, you know, those other religions do, because he died, but three days later he rose. And that's one of my favorite passages of Scripture, actually, um, in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, in the beginning, early in the beginning, where it speaks of Mary, of the two Marys visiting the tomb, and they, they come across the angel, and the angel tells them, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was lying. They walked into an empty grave. Jesus came out of that grave, and that's what enables him and enables us to know that he's with us wherever we would go, whatever it is that we're facing, he's there. He's there in triumph, and he's there in, in times of defeat. He's there when we're joyful, and he's there when we're suffering. He's there regardless of whatever it is that's taking place around us. And, and I see COVID-19 as just that. It's a stage of life where, yes, there's, there's death, and yes, there's suffering, and yes, there's confusion. But I know, like I said before, I know who's in control. And I know who I can count on, and I know who I can trust, and, and who I can take with me everywhere I go, and that's Jesus. And I, and I, I rely on that. I do my due diligence. Um, I'm, I'm washing my hands more often. Um, I'm using hand sanitizer more often. Uh, face masks have become a new part of my wardrobe recently. So I'm doing my due diligence. I'm not going to be negligent to those warnings and to the advice given to us by the professionals around us. But I know that doing all that, following those instructions and doing everything else is just assisting the man who's in control of it all. Um, and that's Jesus himself. And, and I understand the fear that it can cause and the concern and the worry. Um, I have a three-month-old nephew uh, that I would hate to see anything happen to. My grandmother, who's just moved uh, to Phoenix from Hawaii and been with us for a little over half a year, um, I know the concern. I mean, I can even share with you that in my workplace, I have a coworker who was helping another uh, another field, and a person that he was working with, a coworker of his, was quarantined due to testing positive for coronavirus. And that's in my friend's workplace. So I know how how scary it can be. And I know how big this world is making it out to be and how crazy the media is building it up. But I'm not going to be one to tell God how big and how great my problems are, how big and how great my concerns are. What I choose to do and what I've learned is to tell my problems, tell my worries, tell my concerns, how good and how great my God is. How good and how great my God is. Amen. There's things that we that we can't control. Um, like I was sharing in my message this morning with my congregation, there's things that we can't control, and one of those things is tomorrow. Uh, the book of Proverbs tells us in two separate passages, don't brag about tomorrow since you don't know what the day will bring. It also tells us that we can make our plans but the Lord determines our steps. You see, we have no control 
over tomorrow. Yes, it's good to plan. Yes, it's good to have a plan and to live life accordingly. But the fact of the matter is we're not guaranteed the next moment. And that's what makes me just more appreciative of every moment that I do have and trusting God and knowing that he's with me every moment that I do have. Um, and I know that God is wherever you're listening tonight. I have been privileged, like Gerald was saying earlier, um, to visit a lot of the reservations up there and many of the different churches up there in, in the White Mountain area. And it's beautiful land, beautiful people. I relish every opportunity that I have uh, to go up there, whether it's for ministry or whether it's to take a family vacation or to bring a couple friends up and, and enjoy you know, the beauty that is your land. I know that God is with you there just like he's with me here. And the confidence that I walk in daily, knowing that God is with me, is the same confidence provided to you uh, that God is with you every step that you take, every breath that you take, every word that you would go. But in the midst of all this craziness, God is there with you. And there's another verse that really speaks to me, and it's something that me and Gerald have shared over the years. Um, Gerald's been a great friend. He's been a great mentor um, in my times of, of need and times of, of worry and confusion. I, I've confided in him. He's given me great advice. And, and one of those those real nuggets of wisdom that he shared with me is something I want to share with you guys tonight. Um, in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, I read here, I believe it's verse uh, 6, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And that's coming from the New Living Translation. And you see, worry is a crazy thing. It, it can cause us to overthink things. It can cause us to underestimate things. It, it can cause us to have fear. Um, it, it can do all kinds of things, and that fear can take literally physical effects. But here, Philippians, Paul is telling the church, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And that's something that I believe the world even now, especially now, um, should do. Especially if you're a believer, if you're a non-believer, I encourage you um, to, to take take a chance on God. He's not going to disappoint you. He's not going to let you down. Um, perfect love is what's found in him. But it says here that you experience God's peace, which is the only thing we can understand. If you go to the NIV version, it says peace beyond all understanding. And, and one of the nuggets that I want to share with you tonight that Gerald has shared with me um, in the past is, is to really experience God's peace. We have to forfeit our need of understanding. Yep. See, because when we forfeit our need of understanding, then that's where this peace of God that Paul is talking about comes in. And it and it's a piece here that he says will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Uh, my message is simply this. It is living one day at a time and trusting God because we know that he is there. And the points that I talked about was why we need to do this and, and, and how we need to do this. Was one, which is where we spoke about a little bit, because we're not in control of tomorrow. We cannot control tomorrow. So we live for today. And two other reasons real quickly. Uh, was that today worries in itself. Um, scripture tells us that it even specifically states that. I'll share that with you here in just a second. And then the third reason was is that God will meet tomorrow's need. I know that you're out there. There's so many things. I have braved Walmart one time since the whole thing broke out, and it was crazy to see the, the shelves completely bare unless you wanted some potato chips or, for, or some super healthy cereal that has no flavor. Uh, yeah. You see security guards in the toilet paper and paper towel aisle. Uh, craziness, total craziness. But in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, uh, starting verse 31, and again, this is from New Living Translation, it says, So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, 
but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And here's the key, um, one of the key scriptures that I use in my life, uh, when I face storms, when I face some pretty crazy times, um, even facing a time where I, I personally felt like giving up on this, this Christian life because of some things that had taken place and some, some things that some of God's children had said and done to me. This is one of the scriptures that I relied on heavenly, and, and I still rely on it and tell myself every day when I wake up. It says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. Well, tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. If that's you, I encourage you, and hopefully this message brings um, just encouragement for you, is, is take it one day at a time. Because we know, from Resurrection Sunday, we know God's with us every step of the way. Take it one day at a time. Trust God, knowing that he's with you every step, knowing that he's going to be with you, whatever it is you're facing, wherever you may be going, because he's there. We don't pray to a grave. We don't reach out to a body that's lying somewhere in the tomb. We pray to a living God who wants to be an active part of our everyday life. And he knows your struggle. He knows your fear. He knows your worry. He knows your concern. And I believe God's people just need to take a step back and you'll see that God's right there, and he's telling you, daughter, son, I got this. I'm right here. I've got this, and I've got you. And if you're interested in hearing more from, from uh, Pastor John and his message this morning, I encourage you to go to Phoenix Church of His Presence Facebook page, and you'll see the video uh, from this morning's uh, service there, and it's posted there. But you know, tonight, um, as we close out um, our eight days of prayer, this this week being Holy Week, we prayed. We've been praying for our, our, our reservation for people, and just for healing for the entire world, for our state. Um, we've been doing that all week, and tonight it's it's an honor and a privilege to have Pastor John online with us. And I'd like to ask you, Pastor John, could you lead us in prayer as we close out tonight? Just 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 pray for pray for our reservation, pray for our state, and just whatever the Lord lays on your heart to pray. If you could just go ahead and lead us in prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for this day. And God, we're thankful for this privilege and opportunity to to spend time together, Lord God, as family and to, to reach out and, and to encourage one another. And Father, I pray tonight that, that this word that has gone forth and the things that have been shared would, would bring strength, Lord God, and bring encouragement. God, and bring peace uh, to to whoever needs it, Lord Jesus. There's there's so much going on. There's so much craziness and uncertainty in the world around us. But one thing that we can count on for sure, and one thing that you know is not affected by the things that are taking place in our world, is the fact that you are King of Kings, Lord of Lords. That you are Alpha. You are Omega, beginning and end. And God, you are in control uh, of of all things. And so, God, yes. let us let us find that peace. Yes, and that comfort in the fact, Lord Jesus. Yes, God. God, I would pray for the right now, Apache tribe, Lord Jesus, that yes. and all the different ones, Lord God, in that area, like, that you would continue to bring healing, God, that you would continue to bring restoration and, and comfort, Lord God, and peace to those that are needing it. Um, Father, again, like I said, you're in control. The case number is that, Lord Jesus. But I'm praying, Father, and, and like Gerald was saying before, we a lot... Many people believe, many professionals believe that we have reached the peak. And God, we, we speak that, Lord Jesus, that yes. there will be no more cases, there will be no more growth, Lord Jesus, yes. on the reservations, Lord yes. God, and that you would continue to provide wisdom, yes. Lord God, for the tribal leadership as they yes, make God. the different difficult choices that have to be made. Um, it's not an easy time for them, Lord God. There's a lot of pressure coming from different ways and different areas. But God, I pray that you would continue to provide wisdom, that you would continue to lead and guide them, Lord Jesus, as they take the well-being, Lord Jesus, of the Apache people yes, into their hands and they make the decisions, Lord God, that have to be made. I pray the same for leadership over all the states of Arizona, Lord God, even over this country, Lord Jesus. Yes. There's so much speculation and there's so much negativity being shared about what different leaders have done, what different people have said. 
Yes. But God, I'm praying strength and I'm yes. praying encouragement yes. and I'm praying, oh God, your leading and your wisdom and your guidance will God be before every single one. Lord God, not just yes. here in the state of Arizona, but Lord God, nationwide. And even yes. for our president, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to lead him, God, yes. and guide him. Uh, give him wisdom, Lord God, because he's facing very harsh criticism, Lord God, for the choices that he's made. Father, we support our president, and we ask that yes. you would be with him, yes. that you would lead and guide. We know that he's a praying man. We yes. know that he seeks yes. the counsel of pastors. Yes. We know that he seeks the counsel of you. So, God, we ask again that your voice be heard, and that yes. you bless the president, Lord God, and you give him the wisdom to yes. make the decisions, Lord God, the tough ones that have to be made. And, God, for those out there that have family members that may be suffering, God, from this coronavirus, yes. Lord, I speak healing over yes. their bodies, Lord Heal Jesus, them, Lord. Yes. over the respiratory systems, Lord God, and how they're affected. Yes, God, Lord. I speak healing, Lord Jesus, over the emotion, Lord God, yes, and God. the spiritual lives and spiritual well-being well yes. of those, Lord God, that are, that are dealing with it, Lord Jesus, because it's hit home. God, I pray your peace, which we talked about tonight, that yes. peace that goes beyond all understanding. God, let it blanket the reservations, Lord Jesus. Let it blanket those, Lord God, that are listening tonight. Father, I pray that, that they would feel your arms of love yes. as they wrap around them and say that it's okay, I'm here, I'm with you, we're going to make it through. Yes. Lord. And God, I pray, Lord God, that just during this time, uh, like Gerald mentioned, with no distractions, Lord God, the distractions are being limited greatly. God, that we would find you. Yes. God, that your people would find you in a very real and tangible way. Yes. God, we're blessed to have the days that we have. Yes. Every day that we wake up and are able to take a breath is a gift from you. Yes. So, Father, I pray that during this time, as the nation and as the state is reaching and searching for answers, Lord God, that we would find the ultimate answer to whatever it is that we're facing. Yes. And that's you. Yes. God, let this be a time in which your glory is seen. Let this be a time, Lord yes. God, in which your power is put on display, Lord God, for, for us to see. Yes, God. And to know that you are in control over all the things that are taking place. God, yes. I pray for the many pastor, the many pastors that are out there, Lord Jesus, because even as Christians, Lord God, this is this is a tough time. The world has questions and, and they're looking for answers. And they ask us, yes. Lord God, how can we be the way we are? How can we yes. keep doing the things that we're doing. So, God, I pray wisdom, and I, I pray, Lord God, that you would give words to every single minister, Lord God, to every single believer that would come across the one who's looking for something. God, yes. that you would give them the wisdom and the words to share that would bring peace, that would bring joy, that would bring comfort, that would bring answer, Lord God, to the chaos that is taking place around us. God bless the many churches. God, I, I've been privileged to visit a lot of the different churches up there and to meet yes. a lot of great people, Lord Jesus, in the times I've spent up there. Whether it was doing ministry or whether it was going fishing, Lord God, at the lakes and the streams and just enjoying the beauty that is, you know, the Apache Reservation. God, I, yes. I pray. My heart goes out. My heart goes out because of the friendships that I've made, because of the people that, I, the people that I've met, the, the, the lives that I've been blessed to become a part of. My heart goes out to the Apache people, Lord God. And tonight, I speak your blessing. Tonight, yes. Lord God, I yes. speak your healing. From that, tonight, I speak your peace. Yes, God. Be over every Amen. Let it be single seen. one. Yes, God. God, let tonight be a night of rest that people have not received in a long time since this coronavirus news came to the forefront and became the storm that it has become. God, I speak peace yes. over these things. Yes. And let tonight be a night in which everyone who hears this word and those who are going to hear it, Lord God, yes. get rest and be restored. I especially speak that, Lord God, over the tribal leadership, over the pastoral leadership, just over all the leadership, Lord God, up there. Let them receive rest. That they will take on tomorrow, new day, with all the things that need to be done. God, with just refreshed mind, refreshed heart, yes. encouraged knowing, Lord God, that you're there every step of the way. Again, Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this privilege. Though God, thank you that you saw it fit so many years ago for two gentlemen by the name yes. of Jonathan and Gerald to become friends and to do something like this. Oh God, we thank you 
We praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to a good summer and hopefully John we can have you and your family come up this summer a few times and uh, maybe even your co-workers whoever and we like to invite you to come up when the uh, reservation doors are open again you know I'm hoping that'll be very very soon and I look forward to having you join us a few times for ministry as well and uh, oh yeah definitely definitely yeah definitely and and you know for those of you who are listening I, I appreciate you just joining us every night this week you know, it's 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 been a wonderful time. I've been looking forward to the nine o'clock prayer times and just hearing the different ministers. And tonight, it was truly an honor to have uh, Jonathan with us online. And we appreciate all our pastors. We really appreciate all our first responders. We appreciate medical staff, our doctors, our nurses. You know, all those essential employees who've been working just overtime all this time we want you to know that we appreciate you and we pray for you we just ask god's blessings over you for all that you've done you know you are you are uh you are very brave actually and to just 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 to take this on and uh, we just owe you i mean we are indebted to our first responders and our essential employees but we just want to know that we appreciate you and um once again, thank you for joining us tonight, and it was a wonderful time of prayer. It was a wonderful time all this week, and uh, perhaps maybe in the future we'll we'll start doing this maybe once or twice uh, a week, and then we'll just see what happens. But I think it's a good time for us as a tribe to come together and just, just pray and seek God. And uh, tonight, um, as we close out, I just want to say God bless you. I want to wish you and your family a happy, happy, happy Easter. And you know what? Tomorrow, let it be a new beginning. Let it be a fresh start. Let it be a, a good week. Let it be a good month from this day forward. We declare it and we speak that in Jesus' name. And we just want to say good night and just have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening tonight. God bless you all.